Howdy, AP Precal. It's Miss Cash. Welcome back. Um, I started on 3.1, and so hopefully you found that video. And now we're going to go into 3.4. Um, what I like to do is um, I introduce this using raw spaghetti. So I know I have old, and I've been doing this for years because I think it's cool. Um, and that's what we're going to do. And I will go post one of the old videos that I have that deals with that. So we're going to pick up um, these notes assuming that you went and watched the spaghetti video. Okay, so with the sine curve, our domain is all real. I can take the sine value of anything. My range, however, I go as low as negative one and as high as positive one. So my range has hard brackets and it goes from negative one to positive one. My cosine, okay, so it says as the input values or the angle measures increase, the output values oscillate between negative one and one including negative one and one. So it'll go as high as negative, uh, high as positive one, as low as negative one, it includes those, and it keeps going. Okay, same idea here. The domain of cosine is negative infinity to positive infinity. Its range is negative one to positive one. It oscillates again between negative one and positive one. Okay, so now here's the cool thing. We can see here that cosine is, if we take the sine curve and shift it over a tiny bit, um, we get cosine, or if we take cosine, they, we can shift and write one as the, the equation of the others. Um, this is an identity that, that we sometimes, um, that it's helpful to sometimes know. This is not one that I can spit off the top of my head, but we're going to have an identity later that would let us work our way back from here, back to here, if that makes sense. So anyway, it's kind of cool. But basically the idea is, so far, that this sine curve, notice it starts at 0, 0, it goes up first and then comes back down. Cosine starts at 0, 1, but if we had, um, if we if we take cosine and shift it to the right, pi over 2, then we would be at doing the sine curve. And this one, we took sine and shifted it to the left, uh, pi over 2, so that it would begin right there. Okay, uh, the blank of a sinusoidal function is the smallest positive value k such that the period of a sinusoidal function is the smallest positive value k such that f of, of theta plus k equals f of theta for all theta in the domain. Um, Ms. Kosh, me, describes that as how long it takes the graph to do everything it's going to do. So I look at this graph and I'm like, well, how long, okay, so if we start here, we go up, we go down, we come back to zero. How long did that take? That took us to pi. So sine, um, I think we get to write, oh, we'll write it down in a second. Um, the blank is the reciprocal of the period, and that's the frequency. Now, if you remember back to that problem we did a second ago, where it talked about the ceiling fan, um, the frequency, it, it rotated two rotations every second. So its frequency, um, that idea kind of ties into frequency. Okay, I may be complicating things. Pause on that idea. We'll do more word problems. Don't you worry. Okay, the blank is half the distance between the maximum value and the minimum value, the amplitude. So the amplitude is how high do we go? Okay, and then the, the next one is the midline is the average of the maximum value and the minimum value. So this midline right through here, the amplitude is how high did we go above, and then likewise, how far down did we go below? So the amplitude of the parent function, okay, well, here's the sign. Let's write these down. The period, what did it how long did it take us to do everything we we're going to do? It took us 2 pi. So the frequency is 1 over 2 pi. Um, the amplitude, it, how high did it go? It went up one unit. The midline is that y is equal to zero because it's just right through the middle of this function. Cosine is the exact same thing. It starts at the top, it comes all the way down, it goes down to the very bottom, it comes back up all the way to the very top. And it, how long did it take it to do that? Two pi. Therefore, its frequency is the reciprocal, so that's one over two pi. Be careful with notation. The two and the pi are both in the denominator. I would, I would take off if somebody wrote this because I think that is um, misleading as to, do we take one half and, and then get an answer and then multiply by pi? No, it, it would need, I don't know, anyway, it's those internet memes and let's just avoid that entirely and write it this way, where it's very clear that both the two and the pi are in the denominator. Okay, amplitude here, one, midline, y equals zero. Um, sine and cosine are kind of each other's buddies. They're just translations of each other. Okay, so state the period, frequency, amplitude, and midline of the following sinusoidal functions. Okay, the period is how long it takes it to do everything it's going to do. It starts here, it goes up, it comes down, and it ends up 
doing, getting back to where it began at four. So its period is four. Um, the frequency would therefore be one-fourth. The amplitude, the, I have not, um, usually when I see these problems, I would always ask domain range, period, amplitude, asymptotes. Um, so frequency is kind of a new thing to throw in here in midline, um, but we can handle it. It's great. The amplitude is how high up we went and how far down we went, and so it um, went up one and down one. The midline is still just y equals zero. Okay, this next one, we do have, okay, on this one, what I notice is that we're at one at, um, at the top of the hill, and we're at five at the bottom of the hill, which means that we've gone four units. We're going to have to go four more units, so this would be the point nine comma uh, four, in case we care. Um, and so how long did it take it to do everything it was going to do? Well, if we went from one to nine, that's eight units to do everything we want to do. So our period for this one is eight. Therefore, our frequency is the reciprocal. It's one over eight. Um, and what else did we have? Our amplitude. Okay, so to find the amplitude, we were as low as negative two and as high as four, which means that the average of those is one. So here, are, so our midline is that y is equal to positive one. And how high above the midline were we? We were three units up, and likewise, we're three units down. So our amplitude is three. Okay, let's see how far we got. Um, okay, I guess we got into, oh, that was three, five. Huh, okay. Um, we'll come back for another video. Yeah, we're good to go. We'll continue with three, five in the next video.